and welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet Channel today. We got another catch, clean, and cook, so y'all stay tuned. <laughs> trying to catch this brown. Look at that thing. That's close to two pounds. clean, scaled, headed, and de-gutted um, shell cracker here. And what we could do is just fillet it, uh, just like you would fillet any other fish. Just go ahead and uh, take a nice sharp knife, get in there, and we'll take the side meat off of them. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to give you a step-by-step -step on how to fillet. You can look at uh, a million different YouTube videos and see how to do this. Our big thing is, is we don't have any bones in these fillets so we're gonna go ahead and like square cut them and then check to make sure you don't have any bones in them so and then we're gonna take our fillet and we're gonna cube it up in about oh one inch cubes or so so we'll go ahead and cut them that way All right you can leave the skin on we need the skin to stay on these uh, cubes so we'll just cube that up uh, not real important we'll put that aside in one bowl Go ahead and get the other side of them. This doesn't have to be pretty. You're just trying to um, preserve most of the meat. Now we're going to leave all this on the rib cage. Okay, this goes in this bowl, and we'll show you what we're going to do with that in a minute. We'll go ahead and keep this one up.
We'll finish with the rest. We got our Dutch oven fired up here. We're just going to take the, the the brim carcasses that are left, top from a sweet um, sweet onion. I'm going to dump them in the pot. About two teaspoons of kosher salt on top of them. And we're just going to cover them with water. Just enough to cover them down here. Get them all kind of nestled in there flat. Getting hot cold. Put the onion up on the top. Alright, we'll just put the lid on that. And bring it up to a bowl and let it simmer about an hour. That's it for that. All right, step. real quick, we're just going to check the water level on these guys. Make sure they still got plenty of water. And you can see what we're making here basically is a fish stock. So they're doing fine. Here you're gonna need some, uh, you know, some hand protection, some good gloves. Um, this one here is great. This is a barbecue mitt. And the other one is just gonna rig a regular old pot holder. We got a large bowl with a fine sieve. Now don't try to use a colander for this. It uh, just doesn't work. Um, too many of the bones and things like that will actually go through it. So we want to just dump all this fish from the carcasses in into our bowl there and we'll just rinse this out and uh, that way we're catching all everything that's in there any kind of little small bones um, smells great right? and that's going to be uh, we're going to use part of this to actually cook our uh, rice so that we're infusing the rice with some of that flavor and then the rest we're, uh, we're going to use in our actual gumbo. So we'll go ahead and we'll let this cool down a little bit. And but that's uh, this is golden right here. This is uh, this is what makes this recipe. If you don't do this step, um, I guess you could use uh, some kind of canned fish broth or seafood broth. But just like doing it with shrimp um, or other kinds of seafood really should stick with the same flavors so all the goody from those carcasses are in that broth right there and that's going to make the big difference in this being okay or uh, just fabulous okay at this point we put the broth back into the pot and we're just going to get in here and we're just, just like you do with any kind of other broth let's take a ladle and we're going to skim off any foam and we're going to go ahead and get rid of that just makes a nice clearer broth plus this is uh, going to reduce down a little bit more and get a little bit more intense. Okay, next thing we're going to do is just going to put just a little olive oil on the bottom of our pot maybe a tablespoon just to uh, keep our ingredients from sticking in there for a minute make sure the whole bottom of the pot is covered again no, no uh, need to clean the pot between these steps it's all going to be uh, you know melted into one Thing the end. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and throw in our salt pork and we're going to let that render down a little while. Get it all out of there. We got the pan up. Turn it up a little bit. Try to speed this up. So we're just going to render that salt pork down. We're getting some of the uh, oils coming out of that. You can also use bacon, um, you know, uh, any other kind of cured meat. But it won't take long for that to start to brown and start to render. So now 
we're going to take about half of our onions, which we had quite a bit. We have two cups. Is that starting to get going there? Just going to put about maybe half of those in there. I'm going to start to soften those up. Okay, well at this point now, you know, our onions are starting to soften up, starting to round a little bit. And I'm sure everybody in sniffing distance right now is jumping up out of their chair and going, what is a backwoods gourmet cooking today? Because it smells good. So those are getting about ready. What we're gonna do next is, uh, we're just gonna create a simple roux, just like they do out in Louisiana. We're just gonna sprinkle in them a little bit of, maybe, uh, two tablespoons of flour and let that kind of absorb that the oil that's in the bottom of the pan there and this is kind of an eyeball kind of thing when it, you stop putting it in there when um, when it's kind of absorbed most of the oil and you don't want it to still be a lot of puddles of oil and this flour will kind of soak it up so it's kind of an eyeball thing so all that uh, those salt pork pieces and Onions are also, uh, you know, the flour is sticking to them. So these are all going to help to thicken this. Uh, gumbo is basically a soup or a thin stew, so you're going to have to have some kind of thickening agent in it. And this is one of them. You know, this is a basic kind of a gumbo base. And you want to keep it moving up off the bottom of the pan there so it doesn't burn. All right, so we got that in there. It's already toasting the flour off. The next thing we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we're going to take our tomato paste and we're going to brown the tomato paste and all this too. So we're going to go ahead and put our two tablespoons of just standard old uh, tomato paste in there. So let me get that in there. And we'll mix that all in with our roux too. This just uh, helps to kind of caramelize the um, tomato paste a bit and um, wow the flavor you just I mean you can smell the aroma coming off that tomato paste so this is uh, kind of an important step here for uh, this recipe anyway you see it kind of browns on the bottom and uh, that'll create kind of a fond and then we'll we'll have some broth that's going to raise that fond back up So we'll get ready for that and what we're going to do is very shortly this is getting ready you start to see these nice dark bits coming up from the from the the flour the tomato paste and that's what we want we want that nice dark fond on the bottom of the pan when it starts sticking to your spatula like that and it's getting about ready so we're gonna raise this fond very simply, very soon. Let me let me go grab our uh, our broth. Uh, we got quite a quite a good pond there going. We're just going to put a little bit of this in there, just enough to raise the pond up. And you see how it comes right back up off the bottom of the pot a little more evaporated quite quickly this is our fish stock going back in here. so that'll also thicken up from the, the flour and make almost a gravy you know that's thickening up there and we want it to thicken a little bit before we put all of it in there so that's looking pretty good smells awesome now we'll go ahead and just put the rest in now that it's started to thicken okay, and then while we got our onions here we'll just go ahead and dump them in real quick we'll go grab the rest of the veggies and we'll continue all right, we got that going good now. We're gonna go ahead and put our, these are our blanched uh, red chili peppers. Um, you might wanna test these real quick before you put them in there to see, you know, just how hot they are. 
these are uh, pretty tame. So we're gonna go ahead and put almost all of them in there. You can also always uh, add hot sauce at the end here. So you just put them all in there. So, that's looking pretty. Now it's time for the other parts of our Miroquois. This is our uh, cup of uh, chopped diced celery. Put that in. We have the last part of the Trinity. This is the um, carrots. Go ahead and dump them in there. So, this time, we're going to let that go ahead. We're going to give it a, our, um, this is our reduced liquid from uh, cooking the corn. It's down to about a uh, half a cup. So we're just going to put that in there. It's going to give all that uh, beautiful corn flavor back to it. And we're going to add just a little bit of water. Maybe about a cup. Just to kind of marry everything together. About there. 10 minutes. We've got that thing going again. It's time to come in with our ketchup now. This is the 100% uh, all natural, uh, no high fructose corn syrup ketchup. It's really good. About the best ketchup I've ever tasted. Also, a great ingredient for any kind of a ketchup based sauces, uh, especially barbecue sauce, you might want to make. Very intense tomato flavor. I'm going to put that in. We're going to go ahead and put our, uh, these are eggplants that uh, we brined. It's just going to give it some body. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and put our spices in there. This is garlic, basil, uh, and salt. And then put them in there. Give it a good stir. And you immediately smell those uh, spices come to life there. We did add just a little more water. Um, so we're going to uh, actually put the lid back on this and let it simmer for about another 10, 15 minutes. Uh, you notice the only thing we don't have in there yet is our okra. Now our okra has already been blanched. So we're going to wait a little while to put this in. Now if you're using fresh okra, fresh sliced okra, you want to put it in at this point. Wow guys, I wish you could smell this. Smells awesome. It's been a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pull the lid off here for a sec. Put in our, uh, and put in our final ingredients. We got a, just a pint of, these are our canned Roma tomatoes from last year since we don't have any fresh ready yet. Put them in. And then we're going to go ahead and just put our okra in. This is about a, about a cup of okra. Uh, gumbo is not gumbo without okra. Dump them in there, give them a good stir around. And it is looking awesome. You notice how it's thickening up already? Uh, that liquid from the ochre is going to help this thicken. Uh, we don't want it too thick, we don't want it to be stiff. But right now it's pretty close to the right consistency. If it gets any thicker than that, we'll add a little water. So we'll let that simmer for another uh, about All right, 15 here's minutes. the very last step. We got this up uh, just about to where we want it. We got a nice slow simmer on it. And we've already tasted this. I know it needs a little more spice. If I make it too spicy, nobody around here will eat it. Feel free to spice it as hot as you want. Okay, and then the, the very last minute, all this is completely done. We're gonna go ahead and put our uh, our fish cubes that we did on the very first step. And go ahead and put them in there. I'll just dump them all in there. I mean, they got the skin on this, so that'll help hold them together. We want these to be, uh, you know, bite-sized pieces in our finished gumbo. So those are all in. We're gonna stir them in there. It only takes them like uh, just a few minutes to cook. So as soon as that comes back to simmer, keep them overcooking these fish. We don't want it to fall apart. We want them to maintain their uh, their integrity. So missed one. We'll get her in there. Okay. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna turn off the fire, put a lid on it, and we'll let it set. If 
Fire's out. Lid's on. Still plenty of fire in there. To finish cooking those fish, we'll be ready to eat here shortly. Alright guys, ready to put everything together. So I'm going to show you how to assemble the plate for this dish. Okay, here we go. First thing we have here is we have a uh, nice terrine of rice we just cooked. Nice and steaming hot. We have a bowl and plate. I'm going to go ahead and just turn that over right in the middle of the plate. So we have a nice mold there. And we're going to take our uh, shell cracker gumbo and spoon that around it. A nice healthy portion of it there. Make sure we get plenty of the liquid in it. Alright, now for garnish. We have um, some uh, chopped green onions, right fresh from the garden there. We'll sprinkle those over. Get them all on there. We have a nice little uh, French uh, fresh onion sprig that uh, we split and soaked. We're going to poke that right down in the top here. It'll look like a couple little palm trees there since we're here in Florida. Beautiful. We'll take our uh, nice corn on the cob on one side of it here. Here we have um, uh, homemade fresh herb ciabatta bread with cream cheese. I'm going to go ahead and just arrange those on the side here. Clean our plate just a little bit. And that there. It's a meal fit for a king. Hey, thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. As usual, please subscribe, share, comment. Hey, if you like what we're doing, hit that like button. Hey, the subscribe button. It's right down here. It's red. Click it.